Hey, what is up, mortals? Welcome to part 1 of What If Bakugo Died. I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying, sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. So, we begin. As the creature called Namu sailed through the air, Deku felt his heart grow lighter with hope. All Might's battle cry still echoed through the air. He had won. Maybe everything would be okay, after all. Deku could only hope that his classmates were holding their own against the rest of the villains who had infiltrated the USJ. All Might turned back to face the leader of the villains, a young man who was called Shigaraki. Deku glanced at his classmates. Kirishima was staring at All Might, admiration in his eyes. Todoroki was observing the villains, silently calculating. And Bakugo was watching Deku. But instead of his normal angry or even condescending look, his eyes held. Concern. Deku broke his gaze and turned back to watch All Might, who he feared was running out of time. Deku had sworn to keep All Might's weak form a secret, but he wondered how long his mentor could hold out. I think All Might has this under control. We should probably stay out of his way. Kirishima was eager to watch the hero in action, but he was afraid of getting in the way. The last thing he wanted to do was distract All Might and make things worse. Besides, he was sure that his other classmates could use some help. Who knew where they had all ended up? They deserved to know that at least one hero was on the scene to save them. Kirishima would not just stand by when there was work to do. Todoroki assessed the situation, then nodded. Agreed. We could do more good by finding other villains and assisting our classmates. Though he could come up with multiple strategies for how to take down Shigaraki and the Warp Gate villain, he deemed it best to wait for other pros to come. In the meantime, Todoroki wanted to neutralize as many hostiles as possible before backup arrived. It was selfish, he knew, but he hoped his dad wouldn't be one of the heroes who showed. He'd hate to appear weak before him. In any case, he supposed it didn't matter who came, as long as they were strong enough to take on these maniacs. Bakugo also had turned his attention to All Might, though he wasn't as much of a fanboy as Deku. All Might was still his favorite hero. No matter who he was facing, no matter what challenge was thrown his way, the number one hero always came out on top. But this time, Bakugo couldn't put his finger on it, but something seemed off. His mind briefly wandered to what Deku had told him after their first mock battle, that his power was a borrowed quirk. Could it be? No, that was impossible. He was just imagining things. There was no such thing as a transferable quirk. Bakugo shook his head to clear his thoughts. All Might had this under control. He might as well follow the others and see if he could help take out more villains. As Kirishima, Todoroki, and Bakugo started to head off to find their classmates, Deku stayed rooted in place. Midoriya, are you coming? Todoroki glanced behind him to see if Deku was following. He wasn't surprised to find that Deku was still staring at All Might. Todoroki had his suspicions that the two were linked somehow. The fear and admiration in Deku's eyes confirmed that he cared about him more than just a teacher or celebrity. This was his hero. Deku didn't know what to do. He couldn't blow All Might's secret, but how could he convey his feelings to the others? And how could they possibly help? Just then, All Might made eye contact with him. It was like he was saying I'm running out of time. Shigaraki scratched furiously at his face and neck. Kirijiri, the Warp Gate villain, watched, waiting for orders. No, this isn't game over. Not yet. In that moment, Shigaraki made his move. And so did Deku. Midoriya. Hiroshima watched in shock as Deku rushed at the villains. What did that kid think he was doing? It was like his feet were moving before his brain could catch up. Then again, he and Bakugo had done the exact same thing when the villains first infiltrated the USJ. Kirishima prepared himself to follow Midoriya and fight with him, but then he saw the strange, smoky villain open up another warp gate. Hey, look out. But it was too late. The portal was open, and a hand was reaching through. Kirishima stood frozen with fear, not knowing what to do, as he watched Midoriya run straight into the attack. Todoroki had started running away to find the rest of the villains but stopped when he realized Bakugo, Kirishima, and Midoriya weren't behind him. He wasn't opposed to fighting by himself, but he did wonder why the others would stay. He turned around and his eyes widened. Midoriya was trying to fight the villain's leader and right-hand man dot 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 by himself. Why would he do such a thing? All Might stood by, watching it happen but apparently unable to do anything to help. Kirishima yelled at Midoriya, but the villains had already made their move. Todoroki readied himself to use his quirk, but realized his ice wouldn't reach him in time. He hated combat in close quarters. There was just as much a chance of hurting his allies. Just then, he saw a blur of movement out of the corner of his eye. Just as Deku thought he could get the upper hand on the warp gate villain, he saw a portal open up in front of him. An arm extended, fingers outstretched. Deku imagined the hand closing around him, disintegrating his face, just like it had shattered Mr. Aizawa's arm. D.E.K.U. Move. But it was too late. Nothing could stop his momentum. Deku was going to land right where Shigaraki wanted him. If I can't kill All Might, I'll eliminate his apprentice instead. I.Z.U.K.U. A force slammed into him, knocking him out of the way of Shigaraki's attack. Deku's head slammed into the ground. The world spun for a moment. 
gunshots resounded. Were the villains armed? Or had the heroes arrived? And then everything was still. Deku shakily sat up. What had happened? He shook his head, and the fog cleared. Someone had pushed him out of the way. His head whipped around to look at Shigaraki. But the villain was nowhere to be found. In the chaos, he had escaped. Instead, a body lay on the ground. Blood oozed from a wound that could only have come from Shigaraki's decaying quirk. Catch on. Before we get back to the video, I'd like to talk about our new channel Celestia, our channel dedicated to all things Dungeon and Dragon. Currently we have a series breaking down the different spells in D&D and soon we'll be starting some new series as well, so if you're a fan of D&D or have an interest in learning about it, check it out. Additionally if there is something you've always wanted to see get made into a video, head over there and leave a comment mentioning it. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. With the services Skillshare provides, you can get access to many in-depth tutorial videos on basically anything you want to learn. Each class that they have is bound to help you with your creative endeavors. Do you want to learn how to make videos like this one? Do you learn how to write scripts or edit audio? Skillshare has you covered, and with our link, you can have a 14-day free trial. So what are you waiting for? Click the link now and get 14 days worth of classes free. Link in description below. Back Hugo lay on the ground, his mind reeling. Had he really just saved Deku? Wait was the battle over, were the others okay? He tried lifting his head, but a sharp pain took his breath away. He heard shouting and chaos around him. The pros had finally come. Bakugo peeled his eyes open long enough to see Shigaraki step through Kirijiri's warp gate. It seemed the crusty villain had been shot a couple times, but he was still moving, and he was about to escape. Bakugo wanted to yell, to tell someone to do something, but his voice wouldn't work. He groaned, and that was when he realized just how hurt he was. It was getting harder and harder to breathe. His vision swam. Meanwhile, Deku tried to get to his feet, but realized that his legs were broken. He hadn't been able to control one for all this time. Todoroki came to his side to help him. Kirishima sprinted past them and knelt by Bakugo. Bakugo, hey, wake up. Todoroki helped Deku over to where they were. Where is he hurt? Deku pulled himself next to Kirishima as Todoroki carefully examined Bakugo's wound. A lump formed in Deku's throat and tears started welling in his eyes. He heard the sound of heavy breathing. Am I hyperventilating? He thought, but then he looked over and realized that it was Kirishima. He was crying as well. Deku slowly reached a hand out and grabbed his wrist. Kirishima got a hold of himself and clutched Deku's hand. All Might rushed over. He was starting to smoke from the exertion of keeping up his quirk. Young Bakugo, don't worry, help is here. He started to rush away to flag down one of the many pro heroes who had arrived on the scene. But, suddenly, his control of one for all timed out. Todoroki and Kirishima stared in shock at the skeletal man who had once been All Might. All Might stood there, silent, for just a minute, but then he shook himself out of it. No time to explain. You all stay there. I can still find help. He sprinted away, surprisingly. He was very fast, even in his weakened state. Even though they were stunned, the boys managed to focus back on the situation. The decay is spreading, Todoroki said. I'm going to try and cauterize the wound. He activated his fire quirk and put his hand over Bakugo. When Bakugo had pushed Deku out of the way, he had gotten hit in the chest. His skin had broken apart, exposing his flesh and even part of his rib cage. Todoroki pressed his left hand hard on the area. Bakugo winced underneath him, but didn't cry out. After Todoroki was done, Bakugo's skin was left smoking and charred, but the bleeding had stopped. I think I stopped the decay from spreading, but there's no telling how far it had already gotten. We need a healer. Kirishima wiped his tears, attempting to be brave. All Might will probably bring Recovery Girl back. Bakugo will be fine. He turned to face Bakugo. You hear that, man? You're gonna be okay. Bakugo opened his eyes and managed a dry laugh. Yeah, right, stupid. He smiled. But then his face contorted and he started coughing. Blood spurted out of his mouth and ran down his chin. His smile faltered. Kirishima felt tears running down his face. But he didn't care. Todoroki swallowed. He hadn't been able to help. It was too late. What are we going to do? Deku whispered. His hands were trembling. All Might returned, Recovery Girl in tow. Deku knew it was hopeless. There were just some wounds that couldn't be healed. Recovery Girl did what she could, but her quirk didn't seem to be working. She whispered something to All Might, who hung his head. Then she made her way over to the boys. I'm sorry, kids, she said. Her voice cracked. There's nothing more I can do. What? Isn't there something? Anything. Deku felt the desperation entering his voice. It wasn't fair. Why did heroes always have to be the ones who suffered? She shook her head. The wound spread too far. Even if I could heal it, my quirk would end up causing more harm than good. I use energy within the body to speed up the healing process. Katsuki just doesn't have the power left to heal. How lame, Bakugo muttered, his voice barely above a whisper. No, it's not lame. You saved me, catch on. You're my hero. 
Deku couldn't hold back the stream of tears running down his cheeks. Bakugo had always been present in his life. Even if he could be a bully sometimes, Deku looked up to him. He was strong and brave, so confident. What was he going to do if Bakugo was just dot 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 gone? Kirishima bowed his head. I'm so sorry, man. I I could have done more, I could have. Could have what? Been there instead of me. Don't take away my glory. And don't even think of ever trying to sacrifice yourself. Kirishima shut his mouth. He hesitated a moment, then gave Bakugo a quick hug, being careful not to hurt him. Bakugo accepted it, but rolled his eyes. Kirishima slowly backed away, allowing the others to move closer. I'm sorry, I should have tried to help. I hesitated. And now, Todoroki bit his lip. Shut up, Isahad. There was nothing you could have done. Bakugo struggled with his words. He knew his time was running out. Deku, come here. Deku wiped his tears and leaned closer. Bakugo tried to keep his eyes open. He was fading fast. Don't let this be dot 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 the end. Keep fighting dot 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 keep winning. And dot 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 get those stupid villains dot 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 back for me. Promise, I will. And, with that, Bakugo closed his eyes. A slight smile was on his face before his breath faltered, and then he was gone. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in all this information thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, if you're in the mood for some great storytelling, We the Celestials has got you covered. Are We the Celestials My Hero Academia and Naruto What If channels retell the story of their namesake anime with a twist? Check it out if you're interested. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details can be found in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, then I'd like to extend you an invitation to join the team. The only caveat being that we only accept members from 16 years and up to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interests by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching and have a great day.